Test. Yeah. Oh, well, on. when you put it up high, it kind of got all. I heard you that one time, but when you did, how, how you doing, Miss Talk? Mm -hmm. Test. It test, was uh, test. Test. It was loud and clear. Yeah. All right. I think we're. Let me make sure. Four guys today. CQB. Three guys today. CQB. Three. You know how hard it is to do two different rooms at one time with three men? You, you don't do it. So. How many you got tomorrow? It says four, but the ranger that was supposed to be there today is going to be there tomorrow. So slide that one so kill cliff back five. a little. Which, the, the most forward one. Nope. That one there is good. I'll grab that and move it back with me. Yep. That's empty, huh? Doesn't matter. <coughs> right there? Perfect. I can't, I can't sit back. There's no way. I sit back. I you think you're going to fall? Yeah, I think I'll sit forward, too. You know, when you sit forward, too, right, aren't you making, aren't you making it known that you're more interested in what's happening when you're yeah. sitting? Yes. Yes. water right now right dun, 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 dun. it's here what's cool about this particular whiskey right it goes it just keeps going to me yeah no it, it's still it, to me the cinnamon is the most that that's the most overpowering flavor. I'm trying to go. What else am I? My palate maybe is the uh, the kill cliff that offset my palate a little bit. Way know, possible. Should have done a water swish. You had, but that's a big yeah. So I went into a, a whiskey store the other day and I got some whiskey and she said, "Would you like to try our Maker's Mark Select?" And I said, "I certainly would," but I'm chewing mint gum right now, <laughs> and I guarantee you that I will not really be able to tell what that that tastes like. Uh, but what I get is cinnamon. So you can say spice, and it covers a lot of places. Yeah, I, cinnamon, cardamom, uh, nutmeg, maybe nutmeg, vanilla. I get caramel in there. It's very I, sweet because this whiskey, it's a rye whiskey, mm -hmm. uh, no corn in the mash bill, yeah. was finished in a Caribbean rum cask. Hmm. So nice. when it's so it, oak at first, but now finished in a rum cask where it takes all that molasses, cinnamon, vanilla, caramel flavors out of that wood. And it just lays in the whiskey. Yeah. So they don't no. add anything to it other than, you know, being in a different case. No. When I was, yeah. Once once you start bringing those things up and you start going, like the nutmeg, I'm sitting there. I was drawing a blank, you know. But no. Did you the, come up with that profile? Yeah, that's what I get. You know, that's what I get. I, I you know what what, uh, what's his name? Paul. No, no. This this is not a Paul product. No, I know it's not a Paul okay. product. I'm just saying when he was talking about. No, no. But I'm. I don't know what the mash. I don't know what the ma, uh, the master distiller oh, wanted yeah. that to taste like. That's yeah. what I'm saying. I just don't know. But I think it's really. I mean, the master distiller can have whatever, but it boils down to your palate, sure. your taste. Sure. And I, I think Paul brought that up. You know, when we we're talking, because it's like, yeah, you taste this, and I taste that, and I taste a bunch of different stuff. But the, to me, the cinnamon is the most, my most powerful, you know, taste that I'm getting out of it. So, brown sugar, molasses. Sweet, heavy, yeah. sweet. It's not a heavy drink, but it's a sweet. Yeah, but it's not super overpowering either. No. So I think that's the whole key. And spicy to me. It is spicy. So spicy. It has the high rye content. Yep. Boom. Absolutely good stuff. That's what happens there. What, what was that name again? 
It is Angels Envy Rye. Nice. Yep. All right. Well, you want to uh, dial us in, Mark? Yeah, man. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of On the Range Podcast with Warhog Tactical and Kelly Defense. I am Mark Kelly, as always, with Rick Hogg from Warhog Tactical. And today we have a great guest, and we're going to talk about where we are in a second. But Rick's going to go ahead and ring in our guest. Yeah, buddy. So, again, we've got a two-time offender. We've got Dutch Chris Moyer. Uh, man, I don't remember. I'll tell you a lie. I don't remember what episode you were on before. I don't remember what uh, we talked about. What's that? I don't remember what we were talking oh, no, about. No, no, it was all episode. good. Oh, no, I know, but I don't even right. know what we're talking yeah, about. We just <laughs> Classic on the range podcast yeah. style. We just, we just sit there and have a conversation. Uh, Dutch is a good friend, you know, sitting there sipping a little bit of whiskey beforehand, just uh, working that stuff. So I would say Dutch is probably one of the uh, best whiskey connoisseurs that I know. Uh, but we're out here at Moscato t- Training Facility. As you can see, uh, Dutch was driving the train prior to, and you notice what happened. <laughs> Crash. That's what happens oh, after man. you get off the range and you have too much whiskey and you're piloting the train. Yeah. It's, so it's not good. And then, then he lifted it back on and put it back on the tracks. Correct. I don't think I'm in that good of a shape right now. <laughs> he, don't let him out of you. But I appreciate so, that. Yeah. 56-year-old freaking stallion. Yeah. So <laughs> I would tell you guys out there this. If you're doing... <laughs> if you're doing the woe is management dude if you're doing the woe is me and everything else dude here's an example to look to so uh yeah super pleasure to have dutch on the show man thank you so much i mean first of all it's a hoot being here in this place that you said you're going to get to later but in this place is a hoot seeing you here again and going oh crap rick is here hey yeah. mark's here yeah that's cool yeah. let's hang out together and have some oh. kill cliff have a whiskey and talk shop and we never miss an opportunity to get some media out there. Everything's no. content. Oh, this is great. This is great. It's awesome. Yeah. So, as we're as we're driving out to the range this morning, hey man, hang the GoPro out the window because we want to whatever that state park was. Yeah, there's a state park come up, I think. So yeah. hang the, you know, he's doing this, and I've got him doing two or three things. Yeah, but really, it's good, man. Yeah, but you know, the the key part is, if you guys aren't aware, um, you know, our Patreon page show, Patreon dot yep. com forward slash on the range podcast. It's all behind the scenes, you know, blog stuff, early access, uh, Zoom call. And, uh, heck, you never know. We might bring Dutch on as a uh, guest Zoom caller whenever we get the yeah. – uh, What are we going to – I guess we'll call him the crew. <laughs> yeah, the crew. Let's do <laughs> it. Yeah. Why not? So, yeah. yeah. I'm but, in. Yeah. I'm in. So talk, tell us about your company because Dutch is here. You know, it's a training event. We'll get into where we're at. But it's a training event that we're all at. And uh, we have a portion – and uh, Dutch has got a portion. Go ahead and talk about your company and what you're doing for the uh, LEOs out here today. I am Dutch Chris Moyer, and I run. I am the sole proprietor, uh, CEO of DutchChrisMoyer.com and Dutch Chris Moyer Consulting. So it's DCM Consulting. Uh, I figured that stuff out, I don't know what, in 12. I think in 12 I decided that I was going to open up an off-road company and call it DCM Off-Road. Dutch Chris Moyer Which off-road. is badass, by the way. But now I don't do that anymore because I'm telling you, Mark, the best way to make a million dollars in that business is to start off with $2 million. <laughs> <laughs> I bled. I, bl- I hemorrhaged money in that thing. That was horrible. But it was great. I had a great time. But it was just, uh, it wasn't. Yeah. I told myself when I left the Army, mm-hmm. I said, I'm not going to carry this weight around with me. You know, this, this what is what is Joe Bonamassa saying, black lung heartache? Some men carry... A hammer around. It's about coal mining and whatnot. He says sometimes these men carry a hammer around like it's a like keys to a grave. Right. And I kind of saw this rifle thing. This is this is the only thing I can do. This is keys to a grave. I'm not going to carry this around. But here I am. <laughs> I went back to my strengths, and I and I just look. In the end, I love training men. I love I, I love training people. You know, good Americans. But I love training law enforcement, military, and special Americans. On how to defend themselves, rifle, pistol, CQB, blah blah blah. So that's what I do, and and that's what I have been doing now for the past what a couple of years, five years, I guess. Now we're starting to get into full time, right? I'm trying to chase you as far as what happens in social media and, and how you're doing things, uh, you know. So that's that's what I do now. And so for ATK9 here at this particular training area, uh, they asked me to do a CQB piece. So I'm working with law enforcement officers from all across the country, and we're doing close quarter battle We're t- we we cover close quarter battle theory and then we just go through all the little pieces of close quarter battle and then we do it all day long that's the reason why i'm all sweated up yeah it's a scorcher out there but uh i know that your course and i, I don't mind saying this was one of the more popular ones 
everybody was talking about today out at our our side. Thanks. And uh, so I didn't know that. Good on you. Yeah, they absolutely Appreciate don't want to miss it. So they got two more days to catch it. So uh, we'll have a bunch of content coming out and explaining everything that went on. But we're here at Muscatatuck, which is just outside of North Vernon, Indiana. It's an urban training center. It uh, at one time I don't know the complete history of it, but at one time it was a uh, the National Guard purely here for Indiana, and they they had some other events, but uh, law enforcement routinely use this, and I think civilians can use this for events as well. Don't know about the civilian don't, part. Don't, yeah, I, I, I thought I heard that they had some things going on out here, uh, like fire departments and stuff like that, but uh, police police definitely uh, use this quite a bit. Yeah, go back further though. This was this was a sanatorium, uh, a hospital. There's a there's part of a building out here that's a prison. That's it's honestly I don't know all the ins and outs of what happened here at Muscatatuck, but uh, it's very interesting. There's a hospital back here that's a training area that has uh, a lot of equipment still sitting in the room. So when you the first time you ever come to Muscatatuck and you started clearing and you're going, this is like The Walking Dead, right? This is everybody just left their shit. And here we are like training five in minutes it. ago. Yeah. yeah. And it's a, this, I mean, super cool buildings here, complex CQB environment. Um, there's not a lot of live fire training, only certain elements of the United States Army, uh, sorry, of the United States military get to train here live fire uh, exercise. Uh, and it's limited to long distance shots and stuff like that, mm-hmm. sniper work. Um, but yeah, helicopters are here. NSW uh, comes here all the time. Um, National Guard folks run it. I came here in. God bless. I think I've been here five or six times now, maybe seven. And I worked with uh, I worked with the National Guard unit here and did some subterranean work. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of tunnels here. Uh, the, the colonel was explaining that last night. There's there's a lot of stuff here. It is interesting that that so many people don't know about it, and uh, it's, it is interesting. Yeah. Well, I, right now it's a, an insane asylum because of all the people that are here, and you guys are both <laughs> were handlers, and they're a special special kind of a person. To have that dog barking in her ear all the time. So, what's that been like? You know, having it kind of focus around the canine officer. Because let's face it, they get a lot of training with their dog, but as individuals, they they don't get a whole lot of training sometimes because everybody's trying to work the dog. No, that's a great question. Law enforcement, in particular, just doesn't get enough time nor funds to train the way that some of us think that they ought to, so they can better serve, obviously, the public. Um, you know, there's a lot of pressure on law enforcement officers. The, it, honestly, they're demanded to be accountable for all manner of things. The rules of engagement are tight. They're difficult. Uh, different constabularies can work in a different county one way, but they cross the border to another county, and they don't. They can't work in another way because those county aldermen or councilmen or mayors or whomever they are, they, those rules are different here. Uh, so they run into that a lot. Uh, they will do singleton CQB on occasion, and no one ever wants to do singleton CQB uh, if, if you're smart because one makes none, two makes one, my sword is your shield, et cetera, et cetera. That's one of those things. Uh, we're trademarking that, by the way. <laughs> uh, shameless plug. Yeah, shameless plug, yeah. No, good, so, good on you. So uh, I think it opens our eyes when we start just talking theory. Let's just go ahead and talk theory about it. And they're like, you know, well, and I ask them. How do you do it? How do you do this? How do you do that? And it, there's great answers back, um, but oftentimes it's very slow, methodical. They don't – either they haven't practiced or don't really quite comprehend dynamic points of domination CQB, which is what uh, some of us do. Yeah. And uh, we try to try to push it towards them. And just in, in the end, like I tell all the students, if – if I can open your eyes to this, right, to so just tools in your tool bag, do I understand that you're not going to do this all the time? Yes. Uh, do I understand that the different laws re- regarding your actions in whatever constabulary you work in, are they going to are you going to work like this all the time? No, they're not, and I get it. But if if I can help you in a hostage rescue situation, if I can help you in a school shooting, hospital shooting, active shooter situation, and that a lot of that, what what I did today and uh, Monday applies, and which I'll do on Thursday and Friday as well, a lot of a lot of that kind of thing applies to that type of mission. And it's a funny thing too because they're always saying, "Well, what do we do here? What do we do there?" I'm like, "Hey, CQB is a thinking man's game. If we take four or five principles of CQB and don't break them, really, anything's game." Right, but what what makes commonsensical sense? 
don't violate the principles. Don't go in a room by yourself. Uh, try to make an L shape to so make the enemy think in two different directions at, at the same time. Uh, and then the rest of your skill hopefully will take place. Your skill in the range. Are you a better shooter than they are? I damn well hope they are. Yeah. Uh, et cetera, et cetera. So I think right now uh, we got we got good feedback, and I want to see some of the the after action review write ups. But I'm I'm hoping for for good news. Yeah. yeah. You know, and, and on that Dutch, you know, I'm a firm believer of if you want to say the problem solving starts in the flat range, and a lot of departments they run their flat range so robotic. Do this, do that. They don't allow those officers to think. Give them the freedom and flexibility to start thinking on their own out there in the flat range. Yep. So now when we progress to CQB, they're already thinking, they're already solving problems. So I shouldn't have to go, hey, man, ammo management is the shooter's responsibility. They come in, a couple rooms deep, done some shooting. Hey, man, tack my change because I'm going into the unknown. I, there could be 300 guys in there. Get that gun plussed up. Move Saw on. that today mm-hmm. on a couple of different occasions. And so to me, it's like you're bringing a knife to a gunfight. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, bro. Hey, whoa, whoa, whoa. What happened? You're in the action of shooting a target. He was an aggressive shooter. Everything looked good. Four or five shots into the target and then <laughs> empty. Yep. I'm like, well, hey, you can fix that. Because mm-hmm. if you're going to, you have to be situationally aware, right? Sorry. You have to be aware enough that we've done four or five different rooms and I've fired four or five different times each room. Well, maybe now I need to stop for a second. Mm-hmm. Reload. Yep. Get back to work. Yeah. yeah, but it's a, it's there's a lot of things going on with think, think man there's game. a lot of things going on and yeah. uh, it's funny. <clears throat> I'm not laughing. I'm coughing, but it's a funny thing to watch them. Oh yeah, this, that, the other. Yeah. You know, and I was here uh, last week with my, um, in Miskatonic with the Terre Haute SWAT guys, and we had a new student, and he says, "Well, don't you want me to immediately advance on a target?" As soon as I enter the, the, you know, go through the portal and I see that target deep into the room and go to him, I said, no, I don't. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to not even pay attention to him. Mm-hmm. I want you to clear your corners. Yep. That's the first thing we do is clear our corners. And maybe those other guys behind you, they take care of him. And if that doesn't happen, you can take care of him too on your way to the next point of domination. And at the very last minute of the very last day, we did a force-on-force mission up up, top, up here, uh, one of the houses. And that same young man was on the team, the assault team. He assaulted the op four guy during the after action review. Said, "I couldn't get a beat on him mm-hmm. as he as he moved from space to space, yep. and the other guys zapped him." Yeah. And you, the best part of my this whole training, that last week's training, when he went, yeah, he like mm-hmm. the like, yep. and I'm like, uh huh, uh huh, yep. yeah, uh-huh. That's those are the moments where. That guy just learned something that's going to save his yeah. life or somebody mm-hmm. else's. Hopefully, he don't have to use it. When but. I first started training Terre Haute seven years ago, six years, seven years ago, they'd put a shield guy in the middle of the hall, and they'd do the, the caterpillar crawl. Yeah. Uh, they don't do that anymore. I, I wonder why. <laughs> uh, yeah. They've done really, really good things uh, since we've done this whole thing, and they look really good. I mean, they, they've done really good, mm-hmm. so really well. How about that? God is yeah. good. He did well. Yeah. No, and, and the biggest thing is guys just need to find those opportunities because I think a lot of times there's a lot of officers out there that are thinking, hey, I need to go to a quote-unquote training event to do training. And one thing we always preach in the flat range, hey, man, dry fire training. What are you doing for your own preservation? And I think it, it correlates to CQB as well. If you think about it, if you understand the principles of CQB, Every time I enter a room, before I even go in there, I'm taking that snapshot. Yes, sir. Right? I'm already building, hey, is it corner center fed? There's some basic things going on. And then even if you take a little step left or right, you're still building, hey, which way am I going? Hey, am I dealing with actual furniture? Because now if you're in your home, there's actual things in there against the walls. Obstacles. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's just trying to get these guys to think all the time. And trust me, there are so many training opportunities available I think that are missed because guys have just never been educated on it. And if we can do that, man, it's an easy day. Yeah. Better. Easier. Yeah. Yeah, I Easier. certainly agree. Yeah. I certainly agree. Now, you guys have been around a long time as far as the tactical world goes. Now, American Tactical K-9 put this together. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, Rick and I do some stuff with, uh, you know, the law enforcement officers. And I know you guys do mill stuff with a lot of guys. Do you see that type of companies going out there and that type of training more now than you ever have to me I, and like i said i haven't been in the world for quite as long mm-hmm. outside of just work but um it seems like there's a lot of opportunities for folks to get out there and train it, you know there is but i'm not seeing a bunch of guys specifically mill ellie no yeah. um 
we've been running a couple courses together. SFAB, another one's yep. coming up. Yeah, we're, we're going to hook those guys up. Uh, but Mill, again, go back. This go back there. They don't have any money. They don't have any money. God damn. They don't have any time. What you've done, you guys have both done pro bono work. Mm-hmm. I've done pro bono work in the past too, especially in my local county, yeah. local community. I want to do some more with my local town. But they don't have the time mm-hmm. or the money. I'm telling you out there, if you don't know this already, most of the time they get one day, yep. one day a year to really train, yep. and that day happens to be qualification day. Yeah, and that's it, not that's not right in any test, way whatsoever. No, it's testing day. No. It's not training day. No, no that's and, right. And, and that's the criminal thing, in my opinion. When you look, at, especially the LE guys, they have a day to qual. So nowhere in there have they prepped them for the test. No. So let's look at it just from. You know, high school kid going to school, you're teaching him subjects prior to giving the test. But these guys get taught nothing. They get nobody looking at them going, hey, man, how can you improve, tweak this, change that, do this? No, they just go out there and expect them, boom, to call. And then I believe it's just a check for that box to go, yep, you've called. Uh, the department's not liable, and now it falls on Officer X. No, concur. And the, the qualification standards – are poor. Yeah. So they're poor. So if we take qualification centers that are poor, but we have to be out of that, you know, we have, we need X amount of officers. They don't know what makes the rifle go. Yeah. They don't understand how the pistol works. Mm-hmm. They don't. They may not understand how the lawnmower works, which is important to me, right? Uh, the internal combustion engine sure. uh, or how to change a tire. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a lot of things that they just don't do. The, part of the mindset that you and I always talk about is the gunfighter mindset. Mm-hmm. Once you put a pistol on your, on, your, on your side, you get out of a car, that's close quarter battle, and you're a gunfighter, bro. Yeah, whether you want to believe it or not. Nah. Yeah. If you got a badge yeah. and a gun, and you got out of the car to say something to somebody at a traffic stop or wherever it is you're going, mm-hmm. you're now a gunfighter. Yeah. And that's a but lot of them don't have that mentality. That, that's the problem, Dutch, right? It, it's driving that mentality. So think about it. In the world we used to live in, you blow me out the door, and we might engage a 1,000 people. We might engage nobody. It's all driven off of that situation. And the problem is I think these guys don't have that mindset, right? No, they don't. The situation is going to drive the train. If I show up out there, all right, I'm law enforcement X, you know, I should be, like you said, in your mind before you even disembark or I'm doing that traffic stop or domestic or whatever the case may be, this can go terribly wrong. Yeah. I may have to use deadly force. They have to know it's going to happen. 100%. One of the things you and I talked about, too, the other day, and I, I t- mentioned to my students, proper close quarter battle can be exhausting. Mm-hmm. If you're doing a, a large structure, especially if you're doing a large structure, but not just because of the physical uh, issues of it. You're wearing kit. You're going around the corners. You're going fast. You're going slow. You're going fast. You're going slow. It's You have to know that someone behind that corner is going to kill you, mm-hmm. and you need to kill him first, him yep. or her. Yep. And it's sort of like the pistol sh- uh, shooting, right? Pistols on unforgivable platform, and every time you pull the trigger, you have to know it's going to explode in your hand. Mm-hmm. So you don't get this anticipation. You don't get what's is or is not called trigger jerk, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's You have to know it's going to blow up. So you have to pull the trigger out moving the gun. In this case, in CQB, you have to turn the corner knowing that someone's going to be there, yeah. and that can be exhausting. But you drive in there. That That's the whole thing. When you sit there, take that snapshot, break that corner, whichever way you're going, you're driving that rifle in there going, hey, man, is it there or not? And it's like, if nothing's there, cool. As soon as it's not, what do you do? Look for work. Yeah, you're looking for work. I'm gone. We're moving on. Primary, secondary, I'm looking for work. Something else has to be done. There's so many guys go in and and they shoot the targets and they just stand there. Yeah. Yeah. Now what? No, they're admiring their work. I go, stop admiring your work. Yeah. Just get out. Go Go find something else to do. (laughs) Somewhere else to go. (laughs) Until you're done, boom. Stop admiring your work. But then even when you're done. Did I hit that? But even when you're done, you're not done because you got to sit there and do a back clear. Oh, yeah. Make sure that, hey, our work's been done properly. So th- it's hard trying to instill this mindset into people to go understand, hey, man, I laid out on the flat ranges of this. Shooting's an unemotional event, right? There's no emotions attached to it. A person gets a vote. 
Yes or no? Hey, man, you wish me hostile intent. You know, state of North Carolina says imminent threat of death, great bodily harm, or sexual assault. Boom. I can use deadly force. Officers are in the same boat. Boom. Deadly force is warranted. Give that deadly force. And then once the fight's done, okay, either it's right there and that's all it is. I'm moving on. If I'm in a structure doing something else, wherever the case may be, and just keep, you know, that positive mindset. But that's the thing is these guys, it, it, mindset's such a broad, broad brush word, right? It and, is. And, and, You're and, right. And, and, and I hate to use it. But I don't know what other word to plug in. I haven't found one that fits. No, I like what you say because is it – okay, it's your mindset. Is it the proper mindset? And for whom? The proper mindset for whom? You know, is it for the gunfighter or is it the baker or the candlestick maker? You know, what's, <laughs> what's, the, what's the proper mindset? I mean, where is that? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Well, but I think across the board for all of them, right, you got to have the winning mindset. It doesn't matter what you're doing. It's a good idea. I would think. Otherwise, you'd be, you know, living under a bridge. Well, <laughs> bathing in your own urine. <laughs> so, or even worse, somebody. You don't else's. want that. You don't want all oh, that. I think mine would be all right. Somebody else is like Mark. Somebody else's, which is worse. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> so, so we got a pretty cool backdrop. I, you know, I'm looking at this, like this firehouse deal where you can, uh, you know, set stuff on fire and run in there. Those guys are nuts. We got some. We have an embassy. Remember, we were driving around looking for, for the. Yeah, there's uh, an embassy. J- there's J- an embassy. J- JC, where are you at? Pin drop. Yeah. I'm the embassy. The embassy no, you're though. not. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're not. Yeah. The search party Which came is back. right next to the hospital, by the way. Yeah. I, we but did I, see the I don't hospital. think that's the original one. The original hospital? Yeah. As far as I know. Yeah. That's the original mental institution back in the 20s. No, that's okay. So there are other buildings that you can tell mm-hmm. that are much more part of a mental type institution. Yeah. And there's, But they look hospital like. Okay. But the hospital is a hospital. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. It looks like a hospital. All right. It looks like it, smells like it, acts like it. So, three, three floors. And so, to, so to our defense, we have been off-site <laughs> for the viewers yeah. listeners out there. We have not spent our time here. Nor have you have like five trips here. Like, I'm, no. I'm, I'm, I think I'm over five. So. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. So, so, if anyone, so if anyone's looking for the end to Miskatatuck Urban Training Center, yeah. uh, hit Dutch up and he will give you the <laughs> lay down. He'll give you a pin drop yeah. to the embassy. <laughs> yeah. So you suck yeah. it. That's yeah. what you get. So what you got coming up next? Anything good that you could tell everybody what uh, maybe they can attend if they're looking for Yeah, I appreciate that. Thank you. I'm, thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. I appreciate that. So October, um, what's well, October like tomorrow, right? Uh, it's, it's a couple it's, days. It's, we're, we're very close. We're yeah. very close. Uh, a couple days, it's going to be October. I only have one open enrollment class in October, and it is on Hallow's Eve. It is 31, 30 and 31. And uh, it is... <coughs> Everything I do is based on what I call – I love to talk about leadership. When you and I do stuff together, mm-hmm. leadership, leadership, leadership. Yep. And you do stuff, leadership stuff. Leadership is very important. So under the banner of all my – well, I, I have three levels of open enrollment type classes for pistol and rifle. And I call them the evolutionary gunfighter banner. They're all underneath that evolutionary gunfighter. The, you Certainly when you evolve, when you pick up a gun, you're a gunfighter, you get better at it. You know, intermediate gunfighter, where are you? Advanced, blah, blah, blah. And there's a lot of names out there that are like Gunfighter 101 or, yeah. or Gun Level 1 or yeah. whatever. I don't yeah. I don't know. But it, I think, personally for me, I think it's all marketing. It is so, marketing. So when you look at it from... Evolutionary Gunfighter, that's marketing. Yeah. It, well, that is. But you go Evolutionary Gunfighter 101, 102, Yeah, no. Yeah, so what would, what we do under the banner of Evolutionary Gunfighter, the first one is the Gunfighter Awakens. This is the basic. I like you it. You already know how to shoot. I do like that. You know how to yeah. shoot a little bit. Yeah. Right, you know how to shoot a little bit, but you're not ready to be. Mm. So that class for me is, in my mind, is a my ideas, mm-hmm. my ide- uh, ideological ideas when it comes to being a gunfighter, my philosophies, mm-hmm. and then of course, then we learn about the gun itself. Let's talk about the gun. How does it work? Do you know how it works? Yeah. And if you do know how it works, and you you and I've done this before again, yep. um, if you know how it works, then you can clear malfunctions it's way easier. If you yes. don't know, yeah, it's a good um, point. Yeah, and then we, I talk about the, the ammunition itself. I'll take apart ammunition, and I'll show you what gunpowder looks like, and I'll show you what it does when you light it on fire, and I'll show you what happens when you hit a primer. Uh, so we'll do all that, and then we'll shoot, mm-hmm. and then we'll get evaluations, and we'll shoot some more, and come back and do another block of class and go shoot some more. Um, that's the Gunfighter Awakens, and that's pistol rifle two days. Mm-hmm. Then there's evolutionary gunfighter, which is intermediate, which is – I've done it a couple of different times, intermediate, and there's some beginners in there. It is more of a run and gun. Mm-hmm. I want to run. I want to, like you mentioned before, right, some of these, whether it's a law enforcement agency, constabulary, or somebody else, not much is, not much is really achieved if you're just standing around shooting 
a paper bullseye. Mm-hmm. I get it. You could become more accurate that way, and you can know where your zero is that way, and that's all important. Yeah. But without stress inoculation and without realistic type scenarios or at least heart rate elevation, sure. you're not getting what you really need. Yep. So intermediate gunfighter, the evolutionary gunfighter uh, banner, if you will, is more run and gun. Mm-hmm. Uh, we sure, sure we'll do an evaluation, but it's more run and gun pistol rifle. And then we have the time of the gunfighter is now. And that is all advanced stuff. That's cars. That's inter, uh, That's uh, immediate action drills. Mm-hmm. That's shoot, move, communicate. Uh, my, in my mind, when I do the time of the gunfighters now, it's, okay, there's two lanes of steel. Time's on you. Let's go. Mm-hmm. And shoot shoot against your buddy. I yep. want man-on-man competition. Mm-hmm. I want man-on-timer competition. Uh, I want to use uh, one of the parts of the, the classes we do. We shoot cars, tell you what actually happens to the ballistics when it goes through cars. Yeah. Yep. Because uh, that's so many people don't know. Yeah. Uh, windshields, of course, and then mm-hmm. fighting from the car, uh, moving to contact, breaking from contact, T triple C stuff like that. So mm-hmm. that's the. Uh, and then the last time I did evolutionary gunfire with a bunch of cats, we did a uh, very special shoot. Uh, we ended the whole thing. We culminated with what I usually try to do is pick out something that we've done in the last two days, and then stick it all together and have a five, six, seven course of action. You know. Shoot. Culmination shoot. One of the things we did, though, we I told him I, we would shoot a unusual weapon, and we did a hundred meter sprint with the M1 Garand. Nice. nice. And they had to load it on the move. I gave them practice mm-hmm. time, but they had to load it on the move like Dick Winters did in the Crossroads episode of mm-hmm. the Band of Brothers when he's running all by himself. <laughs> right, he gets down and he shoots that German across the dike. Um, then you had to you had to CQB shoot that stuff, move back. Put it down nicely, of course, because it is my rifle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then yeah. take your rifle, load it, make it ready, and mm-hmm. then go to barricades. And then you had to move to another station that was a shotgun station. Of course, you had time to practice that. Then you had to move to another station that was a pistol station. Finish with the Texas Star, and you know, and it was, it's just for fun. Yeah. Just, just press yourself, go hard, and and just have have some fun with it. Yeah. yeah. But uh, that's that's, that's awesome. Good. So, it, I'm gonna throw a bone at you here. Go. Band of Brothers. Oh. Absolute phenomenal men. What those guys did, absolutely mind-boggling. If you can pick up an M1 carbine, all right, and do the car wood lifting. So I think it was when they were... Um, a carbine or a Garant? Car- uh, carbine. Okay? Because what ended up happening is if you set the precedence kind of for car wood lifting, what happened with him, when he jumped out, they gave them uh, those limey leg bags. So he ended up losing his Thompson machine gun. When he jumped out. Okay. Probably last too much. Boom. Hits the ground. All he has is a trench knife and I think two grenades. Okay. He finds a dead 82nd paratrooper, pulls his M1 carbine off of him, grabs his ammo, links up with the rally point, and then they've got to go take the guns out. Somehow he... That part's not covered in the show, by the way. No, it should be in the... It should be in the show. Because he climbs up in the tree and he fires at the German, Right. Because I actually talked to Carwood Lipton about this. Super cool. Really? Oh, yeah, dude. Uh, yeah. Wow. Dude. I have a Carwood Lipton story, too, but I didn't get to talk to him. Yeah. Because he died before we were able to have dinner yeah. with him. No. Nah. So, so he lived I, in Southern Pines. Yeah. Yeah. What? Because he came oh, out. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. He came out to Range 65. We gave him a mod demo when I was working at the uh, 7th Group's Fowler Committee. Let him shoot an M4. He thought that was the coolest thing. Oh, ever. hell yeah. He's like, man, if I, I had I wish this I had during, one of these. Yeah, if I had this during the war. <laughs> That's you, <badass>. Yeah. <laughs> But he went on to explain the story because, again, it, there were certain things he couldn't tell because at that time, Band of Brothers was actually being recorded. But he did get into the part of where he climbed up in the tree back well, when they were getting ready to It was to, an M1 to, carbine. Yep, it was. Because he secured it off a 80 second. 30 caliber. Yep. 80, he secured off a 80 uh, second paratrooper. Wasn't zeroed to him. Fires a shot. Boom. You know, lands over here. He sees it. Does Kentucky windage. Boom. Finally gets it back on. But he was just a one of those phenomenal guys to talk to and just how that whole D-Day episode no, that's wound up. God. But again, you can add to your uh, your evolutionary gunfighter. Here's your M1 carbine. Unzero to I, you. I don't have an M1 carbine, so. <laughs> so if anyone out there has an M1 carbine, <laughs> Dutch is looking for one. Hook a brother up. Make sure you hook him up with some bullets. Um, you know, the 15 or 30 round mags, I don't think he would be complained to either or, but that's have probably. him have him climb a tree. Yeah. <laughs> you know? In this evolution, you will climb a tree. Yeah. What if there's oh, no God. trees on the on the range, Rick? Oh, ladder, something. A ladder. <laughs> what if there's... you got to bring in a tree? 
<laughs> Put it on the back of your wagon. On the trail, on the trailer with all the uh, steel that I want to bring. Yes. Yep. There's going to be a tree somewhere in there. Big oak. Yeah. Big one. With, with like five <laughs> or four or five different legs, right, that we have to secure into the ground. That's it, with big old pickets. Yeah. 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 But no, I mean, it's just, you know, to the viewers, listeners out there, man, if they can talk to any of those veterans, they are absolutely phenomenal. Um, I know, if you remember, we went up to the 82nd Association. Oh, yeah. Back in, uh, yeah. had to be that the late 80s, I think. Um, was it 91? Was it after Desert Storm? Uh, probably. Okay. We go up, because it was up in Pennsylvania, remember? Uh, was it Buffalo? Uh, I thought it was Valley Forge. Buffalo well, I went in New to, York. I went to two. Okay. Yeah. Well, regardless, right? Buffalo's in New York. Much yeah. farther away than Valley Forge. But... It, the location is irrelevant, right? <laughs> but you're talking to these guys, and, and you bring up the whole band of other things. And you talk to Before somebody. Before we move off of New York, I lost. Uh, he's now uh, uh, retired, Command Sergeant Major Tuck. Uh-huh. I lost his car in Buffalo, New York. <laughs> Ooh, <laughs> ooh, yeah, lost it, lost it. We had to find it. Wait, wait, wait. This <laughs> is this is this is a quote out of Snatch here. It's not as though it was a pack of peanuts. <laughs> Mark, how'd you lose a car? Well, I did the responsible thing, and since I had been drinking, I parked it. I just couldn't remember where I parked. <laughs> couldn't drop a pin. But get I, a grid. You didn't really, have a map really, with you. The we day had no before, pins back then. so that was the first day we got there. Yeah, so maps, three yeah, days maps. later, we did find it. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yes. So kind of re- 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 please. No, no, no. That's re- hilarious. Re- that re- <laughs> steps. No, but it, it, it's. Well, you, but you. So you, 82nd Airborne. Uh, what was it? Would you do first to 505? Yeah. No, no. That's what I was getting to, but. You went to an association thing? Yeah. yeah Check. The, uh, That's what I was going to say. I knew you were a... Association, um, uh, they have their yearly conference. Or yeah. every other year, right? No, I think it's every year. Every other yeah. year. 505? 505. What's that? Is that yeah. Devils and Baggy Pants? What H minus. H minus. Watch, watch your tongue. Panther H- Brigade. H minus. Yeah. You yes. both were in the same. Yes. Oh, yeah. We're in the same platoon. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the Panther on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I know the D-Y. Yeah. yeah. So the whole H minus comes from D-Day. We earned that because we were in prior to H hour. You know, kind of a big You were? Sure. <laughs> so, was it? Were they famous for the Pathfinders? No. So, so the Pathfinders. How they get in there quick? How they get in before everybody else? Again, just looking at H hour being whatever it was. I don't remember the actual ground invasion. H hour, D day, blah blah yeah. blah. Yeah, yeah the, the, night, the night before. Right? Zero six. Yeah, in the morning. They, yeah, they went in. Same as one one. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. I mean, they all went in together. Yeah. Check. But I guess at that time, the five hundred five didn't have a motto, so they just took. Cool. H minus. No, I just tell everybody we were there five minutes before everybody else. Hey, it doesn't matter. Well, I yeah. wasn't there. Well, no. <laughs> my but, lineage. My lineage. My lineage, lineage yes. was there. The, but, the, yeah, the tribe of which I come from. Yeah. What great dudes, though. You go to those conferences, man. They actually had one uh, up in Cincinnati one year uh, after I had uh, ETS. And, uh, man, I'll tell you what, it was awesome. Yeah. It was awesome. But but you talk to some of these guys, right? And, and getting back to your point of the whole, you know, 101st and Band of Brothers. You'd have conversations with these, you know, World oh. War II vets. Phenomenal. So I remember one gentleman asking me, you know, hey, man, how many jumps you got? I'm some young PFC. I don't know. I think I got 30, 35, whatever. He's like, my God, man. Right? They have like, they have four, like seven. Four. No, no, no. Sicily, four. Normandy. Some of these dudes didn't even go to jump school. Oh, oh. God. Their first jump was into combat. And you're sitting there going, yeah. that's all. Hey, really? Yeah. You know? And they go, or you ask me, you know. Yeah, so, they're, they're, yeah, the third jump, well, if they did five. Mm-hmm. So, so as depicted in Band of Brothers, they did five. The sixth one is Normandy. The seventh one is Operation Market Garden, for yeah. God's sake. But, but some of these guys, I don't know how. <laughs> Seven what, jumps to combat. Right. But, but some of these guys never went to jump school. How that whole oh, piece right. worked. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and I'm going to believe what these guys tell me. Oh, yeah. yeah so yeah. it's like, oh, I've only got four. And I, excuse me? Sicily, Salerno, Normandy, oh, Holland. And you're sitting there going, excuse yeah. me? I'll, I'll, I'll sit down now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, my 35 or nothing. You know? So. Yeah. Tell me some stories. Yeah, I wasn't receiving enemy fire on any of my jumps. Yeah, yeah. no. You know, fryer drop zone, sorry. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, no counting. Yeah. But no, it's just, it's amazing talking to those guys and, and you know, just trying to keep those uh, those stories alive. And, you know, whether it was, you know, Carver Lipton or, you know, it doesn't matter where these guys come from, just keeping that World War II story going because these guys did, in my opinion, just phenomenal things in a very short period of time. You know, yep. within four years, you know, Crushing uh, two major armies on two separate fronts, just absolutely phenomenal. Yeah, so. for all our listeners, if you have the opportunity to, to talk to somebody, especially if there's one in your family or family friend or something, take advantage of it while you still have it. Mm-hmm. It's unbelievable. Yeah. No, I really enjoyed going to those. One hundred percent, because there are fewer and fewer oh. of them remaining, and it's yeah, 
especially in this day and age when there are so many people trying to remove the history of our country, mm-hmm. trying to re- remove the, the the greatness of what these uh, yeah. young men did at the time. Uh, yeah, get, get on it, check them out, and just, just listen to them. Just listen to them talk. So many guys didn't want to talk about stuff in Vietnam. Um, it seemed to me that some of the World War II guys didn't mind talking about it at all. Yeah. Uh, I want to talk about it. Yeah, all the time. Yeah, but but it was a different mindset, right? I, I don't. I, I mean, well, I, what, who, mindset for whom? For them? Or my, no, we're, no, it's part of the joke. There, we're back to the mindset well, question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Never mind. No, <laughs> different generation. Was that ill timed? No. <laughs> we're just we're, quit, we things just fly right over. Yeah, we got no. You know, that's not true. <laughs> so so what's your uh, what's your website? <laughs> Where can people find you? And a scout of Duck Indiana. <laughs> I'm here for two weeks, for God's sake. I was going to say, you know what? Look at the boonies for two weeks. So there's a pretty good chance that you're going to be here at least once a month is what you're saying. No, no. (laughs) I'm not driving 12 hours out of my way to come here for uh, a week. Now, so Dutch Chris Moyer Actual on Instagram, DutchChrisMoyer.com, which is DCM Consulting uh, on the web, on the interwebs. Yeah. A friend, one of our friends might say interwebs all the time. Yes. Yeah. yeah, the interwebs, the which, interwebs. which just carries. I, I mean, I, Whatever I, the say webs. It as, I say it as well. You the know. internet, because if it's not on the internet, it's not true. No, absolutely not. <laughs> and, of course, where now you have your web page. I, mean, I have a website now. That's it, man. It's freaky. Yeah. Yeah. So it, that's when you we know just did a vendor show. It. We had to market ourselves. We that's didn't have you, a great booth, dude, but we had, we had the, a great time. Oh, 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 we had the best booth. Rick left me for the majority of the day. I'm out there kissing babies, shaking hands. He you know? put a big Warhog sign up on the booth thing, and then he walked off. And anyway, everybody came to the booth thought I was Warhog. Mm-hmm. See how that works? Bam. Oh. Bam. But to Dutch's credit, what he did was there was a piece of paper there. It that said, said what? It said Warhog. Only Warhog. Yep. But what does Dutch do? <laughs> Pulls out his Sharpie marker. Draws a line. <laughs> DCM Consulting. Yeah. Boom. And he's out there selling shirts, doing all that other business. You yeah, know? I did sell some shirts. Yeah. See, now we have big a money. I made big money. I made $100. Audience. That's it, man. Well, I wouldn't yeah. call it. Studio. Well, this is God's studio. That's uh, that was uh, I didn't even see what the it was. bike guy. No, that yeah, that's uh, Armin? my goodness, Armin. Yeah, oh. pretty sure. Uh-huh. And the I didn't see the uh, the bald the head, the bald header him also. He was, waved. So. Yeah, yeah, he waved. I didn't even. I wasn't paying attention until I saw the the van go. Forward. Situational awareness, Dutch. Yeah. I so, saw him so wave. If you, so if you attend the gunfighter, you didn't fighter. Even know who it was? Wait a minute! I just blew you away on situational awareness. <laughs> You know who they are. Man, everything's a competition. It's true. <laughs> everything is a competition. Exactly. Because yeah. you either wind up with a W or an L. What did uh, I, where I was? Where was I? We were doing. We were testing for TBIs. Okay. TBIs. Mm-hmm. Traumatic brain injury, and and it shouldn't be eyes. It's eyes plural. But yes, yeah. go ahead. T- t- maybe there's more than one injury. Then oh, it would be eyes, dude. My mm. brain. I say TBIs. TBI. Whatever. We're testing for. The possibility of any one of us having a TBI. I think there was like six guys in there. Okay. Me and my team. Mm-hmm. And Chappie's in there. And Will Dumphy's in there. And I'm, I'm a 2IC, I think. And we're going through a bunch of stuff. And I said, I'll, I'll beat you on that one. And Dumphy's like, it's not a it's not a competition. I said, <laughs> oh, yes, it is a competition. Yeah, it and just because you think it isn't, I won already. Exactly. I'm already winning, man. Well, you don't even know it's kitchen. a competition. Yeah. I'm in your yeah. kitchen I'm already. I'm crushing yeah. you. <laughs> It's uh, like when you pull up to that Corvette and you're sitting there at the light going, yeah, whoever gets that next light wins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. I just got him. No matter what. Back off, loser. No matter what. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Uh, no yeah. matter what. No. All good. So besides the um, – <laughs> oh, man. Besides the October class, mm. um, if people – are in November. Okay. okay. We got one Interme- intermediate – so it's the Evolutionary Gunfighter, the main, yep. my main class. Yep. And that will be on your website. Everybody can find that if they yes, want to. Both of them are on the calendar. Open enrollment. Both are on the calendar. We got the calendar working now. Nice. nice. You can see the calendar. If you look at the calendar right now, you can see that we're in Miss Canada. Okay. It doesn't say that today is carved out for Kelly Defense hmm. Podcast, On the Range Podcast, which we're That's on the, the range. We always get pushed to the side. On the range. I didn't oh. know that, though. No, it was yeah, this it, is impromptu. Yeah. As it should be. But this is. <laughs> but check this out, though. This is the On the Range Podcast, and we're literally on the range. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's cool. It's yeah. not a gunfire range here. No. It's the Broken Train Range or whatever that yeah. is, but it's the whole facility. Yeah. The place is awesome. No, it, it 100% is. Yeah. Um, <laughs> come on, Dutch. What? Focus. <laughs> focus. Laser. Laser focus. So let's say hypothetically somebody wanted to do some private training with you. Is that something possible? Yeah, we can do that too. Yeah, it just costs more, much more money. Yeah. And you have to figure this is 
So if any one of these shooters out there can make let's whatever the cost is and times ten shooters, mm-hmm. there's obviously a larger weekend than one yeah. entity yeah. wanting to do it. So yeah. it usually ends up costing you know much more much more. Yeah, but you so, might have a private group or something like that reaches out because I know. Oh, private groups I can do 100%. Yeah, yeah. And, that's, and it looks like a open enroll class sure. for a private group. But, yeah. but, but, again, it's just a group of guys, and they're doing their business. Yep. Yeah, okay. so they shouldn't just be tied to the calendar thinking that they have to catch something. They can definitely reach out to you. 100%. And the best way to reach out, is, is it through the website or is it actually a DM on IG? No, it's through a website. We have uh, email attached to the website. Nice. Well, Info at DutchChrisMoyer dot com. Okay, you can you can write Dutch at DutchChrisMoyer dot com. So okay. yeah, you get, you get a newsletter as well. Oh, thank you for that. Thank you for that <laughs> shameless plug. <laughs> Mister Mister Warhol uh. here uh, has been uh, cajoling me into finally getting a, a newsletter. And yes, we've I've written a blog. Oh, nice. <clears throat> and uh, blogs are important. Blogs are important. Yep. Now you have a vlog, so I have to catch up with you. See mm-hmm. again. I'm in your, I'm in your vapors. Your vapors. So, yeah, you, there's a newsletter. So sign up for the newsletter. You can do that on the homepage of DutchChrisMoyer.com. Oh. Uh, it's even creepy that I say it's DutchChrisMoyer.com. Honestly, I'm Why? I'm in a bar. Okay. The Sly Fox in Southern Pines. Yeah. I'm with Dylan. Is my two IC. Mm-hmm. He doesn't get enough credit. So thanks, Dylan. And he goes, uh, we need a domain. And I go, no, we don't. He goes, yeah, you do. Mm-hmm. And I said, well, I used to be DCM Consulting Actual or something like that. And he said, well, let's, let's see what's available. And he types up he types up DutchChrisMoyer.com. And he goes, hey, it's available. I said, my Boom. God, do it. Do it for the, for the love of everything that's holy. Just go ahead and do it. <laughs> he's a pretty savvy kid. He really yep. is. He's not a kid. He's 28 years old. He's, but he's a savvy young man. Mm-hmm. And so he's helping me. Good. Good. Motivate me. Yeah. When you're not around, Dylan I, motivates I, I, me. Yeah. I try to stay close, buddy. You know? <laughs> but, you know, I mean, you bring up a great point, Dutch. You know, it's it's all about how do we help each other. <clears throat> and, you know. We talked about uh, that the other day, too. Yeah. Smart. So so whether I'm sharing what you got going on, you're sharing what I'm going on, you know, Mark does. It, it, it's all just because we all have different reaches. So if I can sit there and, and slap something on there, hey, man, Dutch has this going on, boom. There you go. Why wouldn't I? What's it cost me? Two seconds of my time? Oh, my God. If it helps you out, Perfect. You know, same thing, vice versa. So, you know, I think a lot of guys is, you know, who are those people in your tribe, for lack of better terms, helping each other out? No, you know, it's a, and, it is, it is a, the tribe is important <clears throat> to me and should be important to you. As I throw my microphone up. <laughs> should be important to you. <laughs> but the tribe is, you need to find a tribe. You need to find close folks that you can trust, do mm-hmm. things with, of course, count on. Trusted agents is one of the things I used yep. to use. I yep. still do use. You can stick with uh, that. Trusted agents. Yep. You're, you're one of them, of course. Um, I think these I, guys are one of them. I think I stole that from you. I think if I look, I think if you look on, so. on uh, shameless plug warhog dot com, uh, I think under I have a trusted agents page where I've I got people. You do, yeah. I'm glad mm-hmm. you stole it. I stole it. I'm glad. <laughs> yeah. Just letting you know, you need it. Yeah. We we as people, as human beings, you as a, a member of whatever tribe you're in, you need those trusted agents to uh, to help you along. You really yeah. do. This thing that we talked about before, so this helping out each other, uh, I have learned, I have been guilty in the past, uh, mea culpa, of not putting my ego away and saying, hey, you know, what does he know? What does that guy know? Mm-hmm. Why is he more successful than me? And that's a bunch of crap, man. Yeah. Yeah. Get, let that go. Mm-hmm. And then you will either be more successful because you're driving towards a more successful uh place you know your your attitude's better mm-hmm. um and you know whatever. so it's i've learned yeah and i've learned a lot i think a lot of it's just education as well you know i know i'm always on you hey dutch you're doing this you're doing that you know just because i'm learning things mark's telling me things and it's like hey dude trickle you know effect down to go try doing this try doing that hey if it works great if it doesn't pff, all right cool you know water's off a duck's back but it's just You've got to do something. Yeah. Um, and Pull like the tool said, bag, man. Does yeah. it work? Yeah. Does it work? Does it not? It doesn't toss it. Trusted agents and, yeah, keep your tribe close. And, hey, man, if somebody's weighing you down, cut that boat anchor, yeah. hit the sail up, and boom, yeah. get rolling. So, Well, it's been it's been good for to meet you in person. I know we've met several this, times. This week. It's, it's, been, this, yeah. it's been awesome. So Thanks, brother. Uh, thanks for coming on. Likewise. But, uh, uh, all of our listeners out there, you know, we're going to put all the uh, stuff in the show notes so you can click it and go right to his new website. Really excited to take a look at that. So Thank you. congratulations. And, uh, man, it's been a lot of fun. And if you guys aren't getting this type of training from, you know, from us and from 
from Dutch. Seek it out. Find out. Reach him. Uh, reach out to him and find out where he's having his training, where we're having our training, and go. I know the the ammo crunch was it was a real thing, mm-hmm. but uh, hey, you know what? Uh, invest in yourself. Invest in your uh, family security and get out there and train and and have a good time and learn something and uh, be better prepared and more capable. So. 100%. Concur, yeah. 100%. Yeah. 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 Concur, circle, initial. <laughs> Old school. You guys both know what that is. Oh, oh yeah. They don't oh, do that yeah. anymore, do they? Uh, I, I don't even know. Really? We're not if you're our age, how, how would I know? Really? How would I know? Because <laughs> you know everything, Rick. So. I'll go inquire. <laughs> we could we could look it up. We could ask the uh, the Oracle yes. to bring it up. Yeah. The magic box that has I, all the information. The magic box. Yeah. Except tell me where Jamie Hoff is at because I still can't find him. It's not on there. He's not here. Hmm. What? Well, no, he's, he's not, not here. Whoa, wait a minute. <laughs> Maybe he is. Ooh. Yeah. Interesting. Cadaver dogs. Let's get him. Where was where, where was he? Uh... Las Vegas. No. Where was he killed? Under at? the MGM. Nobody no, knows. No, he's under. He's, he's, he's under New Jersey Stadium. Yeah, he's not, under uh, Meadow, Meadowlands. Stadium. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Meadowlands. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That was the big room. He's yeah. under the Meadowlands. Yeah. So. Yeah. When was Thanks. the Meadowlands built? Um. Mark is trying to cut off. Yeah. <laughs> you can't, you can't cut us off, man. No, no. I'm not gonna keep going. The, the magic. Yeah. All right. All, All right, buddy. Cheers, y'all. All right, man. Thanks, Thanks for Dutch. joining us. See you guys. Right. Thank you, fellas. Un- appreciate un- it. Until the next one. Yeah. Roger that.